shiploads of businessmen and true believers are crossing the Atlantic Ocean to create a new world. May 1610, 120 years after Columbus, it's still a perilous journey. One ship, the Deliverance, carries a cargo that will change America forever. On board is John Rolfe, a 24-year-old English farmer, ambitious, self-reliant, visionary, a born entrepreneur. What takes us six hours today by plane was then a voyage of more than two months. Seven of the early adventurers out of every ten will be dead within a year. But the risks are worth it. North America is the ultimate land of opportunity. A continent of vast, untapped wealth. Starting with the most valuable resource of all, land. What will be home to more than 300 million people lies under a blanket of forest covering nearly half the land. More than 50 billion trees. Further west, nine million square miles of vast American wilderness. 60 million bison roam the plains. Underground, there are rumors of gems, silver, and the largest seams of gold in the world. The settlers expect nothing less than El Dorado. But what Ralph finds at the English settlement of Jamestown is hell on earth. More than 500 settlers made the journey before Ralph. Hello? Hello? Barely 60 remain. It's called the starving time. Having fed on horses and other animals, we ate boots, shoes, and any other leather we came across. Three months before Ralph arrives, a man is burned at the stake for killing his pregnant wife and planning to eat her. The English arrive unprepared for this new world and unwilling to perform manual labor. Instead of livestock, they brought chemical tests for gold that they never find. And this is not their land. They build Jamestown in the middle of a Native American empire. 60 starving settlers among 20,000 of the Powhatan nation, armed with bows and arrows that are up to nine times faster to reload and fire than an English musket. They're soon enemies. Only one in ten of the original settlers is left. John Rolfe didn't come to plunder and leave like the others. He's got his own plan. There's money in tobacco, and England is addicted. He's arrived with a supply of South American tobacco seeds, but growing it is limited to the Spanish colonies. The Spanish control the worldwide trade, selling tobacco seeds to foreigners is punishable by death. But John Rolfe has got his hands on some. No one knows how. And in the warm, humid climate, 
fertile soil around the Chesapeake Bay, Ralph's tobacco crop flourishes. The first large harvest produced by these seeds is worth more than a million dollars in today's money. But the great strength of America is our people. If you want to know what is the defining strength of America, it is our people, our immigrant tradition, our bringing in cultures from all over the world. I know what goes into making success. And when somebody's really successful, it's rarely luck. It's talent, it's brain power, it's lots of other things. Ralph marries the daughter of the king of the Powhatan Empire. Her name becomes legend, Pocahontas. In England, Ralph makes her a celebrity when her face is put on a portrait that sells all over London, advertising life in the new world. Shakespeare mentions the colony. England's rich invest money here. All of London knows about this land of plenty. Within two years, tobacco grows in every garden. From a living hell, Jamestown is America's first boom town. Two years later, nearly a thousand more settlers arrive, including 19 from West Africa. Slaves. But some go on to own their own land in Virginia. Twelve years after the founding of Jamestown, Africans were playing a shaping role in the creation of the colonies. That's pretty incredible. 30 years later, there are over 20,000 settlers in Virginia. America is founded on tobacco. For the next century and a half, it's the continent's largest export.